Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today we are working on the prompt book. Prompt number two. It's been like three months since I have opened this book, so I'm super excited to get started. And there's a thunderstorm outside, so I hope uh, you can't hear that. Anyway, we are going to open this book, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link in the iCard to prompt number one. But this is prompt number two, and at the end, I will show you guys' um, miniatures that you made from prompt number one. So prompt number two, I randomly opened to clock. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing out different ideas for clock. Of course, I have a wall clock, a mantle clock, a grandfather clock. And initially, I was thinking about doing a, like a wall clock for the uh, abandoned coffee shop. Um, but I really just, I wasn't inspired by any of these ideas. And so I got kind of the basics out and then... I thought, oh wait, there is a clock so iconic and so fun that we've got to make it. It is, of course, the Felix the Cat clock. Mine comes out a little different from the original, but I thought this would be a really fun clock to make, seeing as it is so iconic. And it is also vintage, which I love. I'm going to be making this guy out of polymer clay. I'm using Sculpey 3. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut a slab off of my chunk of clay, of course in black, because traditionally Felix the Cat clock was black. I'm going to go ahead and put a, a picture up so you know what I'm talking about if you've never seen it before. I'm going to kind of um, eye it. I'm not really printing out a template or anything. I am just cutting out triangles where his neck is going to be and then cut the edges at the top just to round it off a little bit more. So I cut the corners off and then I just keep cutting until it is a rounded shape. Then I'm going to take my fingers and round the edges as well. This is a formed plastic clock and so the edges are going to be very rounded and very smooth. After that, I'm taking my ball tool, and you, it may not be a good idea to do this right away because it is going to deform and you're going to have to keep making the eyes, but I really needed to see where the eye sockets would be so that I could get an idea if the head was correct. And I do mess with it a bit. I um, also go ahead and put in the neckline because that is kind of pushed into the clock and so I use a smaller ball tool to kind of push in the neck and then eventually I take my exacto knife and cut out any extra clay so that there is an indention between his body and his neck and here's he's looking a little bit like a cross between E.T. and Wally -E, but uh, it does end up okay in the end <laughs> if you're worried. He has a little button nose, so I just rolled out a little bit of clay and then smashed it right between the eyes a little bit lower than the eye sockets. For the iconic ears on the top of the clock, I cut out a square of clay and then I cut that in half so that I have two triangles for the ears. This slab of clay is slightly thinner than the one for his body because the ears do sit back from the face of the clock. And so you will see that there is um, a little bit of distance between the forehead of the cat and the front of the ears, which matches the design of the original clock. I'm gonna go ahead and use a tool to smooth that in and I don't know why it's not in the video. For some reason my camera wasn't capturing everything, unfortunately, but um, I will show you the smoothing tool in a little bit. Now I'm taking another piece of clay. As you can tell, this one's not completely even, but that's okay because I really just want one end to be... Um, I'm basically going to be making a wedge shape to create the paws of the clock. And so um, I'm going to be smashing one end into a flat piece of clay and the other end is going to still be kind of a triangle shape and I will show you the side so you can see the shape and I'm making two of those and then I'm gonna cut them down a little bit so that the these are gonna be the bottom legs of the cat they need to go a little bit up past the halfway point of the body and so I'm going to gently put those guys on and then I'm going to smooth those into the sides so that they look like they're cast uh, as part of the cat's body. Then I'm going to follow the exact same steps for the upper paws. 
and, but they're gonna be cut just a little bit shorter because the paws are going sideways because it's supposed to look like it's holding the clock in the middle. And so the um, arms are not gonna be as long as the legs. And I'll show you where those get placed just above the uh, leg. And so it kind of looks like he's holding his knees, but um, he's I think he's supposed to be holding the clock face. So I'm just gonna smooth those arms in so that they kind of blend in there's the blending tool in case you're wondering what I'm talking about it's like a rubber ended paintbrush but it's rubber you can find them at Hobby Lobby and a lot of crafting stores that sell polymer clay so now I've smoothed in the edges of the arms and I'm just going to cut little slits where the individual cat toes um, and fingers I, I guess they're not called fingers but uh, anyway where the cat phalanges are we'll just go with that now I'm taking a piece, uh, like a rectangle piece of clay, and I'm going to be cutting it to a oval shape. I have an oval cutter, but it wasn't the exact size that I needed for the clock. So I'm just cutting away bits until I have, it's gonna look kind of like a gem shape, but then I'm gonna take my fingers and round out the edges, and then I'm also rounding it against the flatness of my desk to get an oval shape. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to place it right in the belly of the cat. So this is where it looks like he's holding the sides of the clock. It should fit in there nicely, just have a slight gap around the outside. Once that's done, I am going to be focusing on the tail. And in one of the pictures I saw where the clock was taken apart, it looked like the tail was about the same height as the, the cat body, but uh, towards the end, I make it just a little bit shorter. This is something that you may have to um, kind of gauge based on how you want your cat to look. And then of course I need to make the hole in the bottom of the clock for the tail. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife, cut out a rectangle, and then smooth it down. Now I'm going to try out a method that I saw on Nerdy Crafter's channel. She does a lot with polymer clay. To take out any imperfections, fingerprints, dust, I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip and I'm just going to rub it along the outside of the cat. It kind of melts the clay just a little bit and it gives it a smoother texture. And now I'm going to bake those according to package instructions. And one thing I've learned, if you really like how something turned out, make a mold of it. This is mold putty, you just combine it together. And I just made a mold of it. And next time I want to make a cat clock, I will not have to work as hard. Now I'm going to be making the eyeballs and the bow tie. And I'm going to take a little bit of white clay, a little yellow, and a little brown. Because I'm wanting this to look a little bit more vintage, those pieces of molded plastic would be a little bit off-white, so that's why I'm doing that. You can make it pure white if you want more of a clean look. I'm going to cut off two equal pieces of clay, round it out into a ball, and then I'm just smushing it into the eye socket so that it kind of levels out inside the eye socket. It does stick out a little bit, so it does look round. It's not perfectly round or a sphere like it probably is in the original clock, but I like uh, how it ends up looking. So now I'm doing a little bit of a skinnier roll of clay, and then I'm going to smush it flat. This is how I'm going to be making the bow tie. And I'm gonna be looking for a place where it's pretty straight. Um, I probably could have done this better, but um, I'm still learning in polymer clay, so if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. I love suggestions. You guys know so much more than me about polymer clay, but um, I'm really enjoying the process. So I just kind of made this into a bow shape, and then I rolled a little piece, uh, a little ball, and then put that in the middle to look like the part where the bow tie is tied. Now I'm gonna take some liquid polymer clay and just dab that on. I forgot to mention, um, I did end up taking the eyeballs out, putting uh, the liquid clay inside there. It kind of acts like a glue when you bake it. So um, you wanna do that when you attach the eyes in the eye sockets and when you attach the bow tie because you don't want those things falling off. And then I'm gonna make sure that I bake that clay as well. Now I printed off a picture of the original Felix the Cat clock and what I want is the face plate of the clock. I'm gonna print it off and then cut it out and make sure that it fits on my clock. And I'm just gonna glue that down with tacky glue. And so this is what we have so far. Just make sure it's centered is pretty important as well. 
Now I'm going to take a micron, it's a 01, which means it's a pretty small nib, and this is how I'm going to be making his eye, like his irises in his eyes. And I don't show you on camera me doing that because it was very close to my face. I'm just gonna do one at a time, and I'm gonna make it look like his eyes are permanently looking to one side. If you know about the clock, his eyes move as his tail goes back and forth, so I just, an ode to that, I made his eyes looking off to the side. Now I'm just taking some white paint and I'm going to be putting the little cat nails on the ends of the toes and fingers, aka the phalanges. So here's our little finished cat body. I'm going to be using polycrylic. This is the best thing to seal off your um, miniatures made in polymer clay. I used to use nail polish, but um, I learned since then that's not great. So I'm just going to brush that on, and I thought I recorded that again, but I didn't. This is, I believe, two coats of polycrylic is what I did on this guy. Once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and add the clock um, uh, little... Well, that one disappeared, so I have to cut it again. But I'm going to cut out the little hands for the clock. You can see them on the printout, but I want to give it even more detail, and so I'm just gonna cut the smallest little slivers of cardstock that I can, and then I'm gonna glue them on with tacky glue over where the hands were in the print off. And you can see it does give it more of a 3D realistic effect. So now I need to attach the tail, and the issue with this is that the tail sits a little bit away from the wall whenever the cat is hung up on the wall. And so um, I also cut the hole kind of in the middle. So I'm putting the ruler down kind of as a um, something to lift the tail up off the ground while it dries. And I'm going to use E6000 glue to go ahead and insert the tail into the hole that we cut for it and make sure that the tail is positioned how I want because it won't be movable. I want to make sure that it's in a position that I like. And then I'm just going to let that dry uh, for as long as it needs to dry. Probably I wouldn't touch it for about an hour and then I would let it completely dry for, I don't know, 24 hours before you really, really mess with it. So here is my little cat clock. You may notice that he doesn't have a face like the original, but um, yeah, I just kind of uh, went with it. He's an off-brand, is what we're gonna say, but I really like, I just like his big eyeballs and his bow ties, so I was happy with that. I skipped the face. Now it's time to check out your minis from prompt number one, which was vintage. This is by Pandora Romanoff. I showed this in the first video, but I still love it. It is the vintage chalkboard and easel with chalk eraser. This tiny vintage doll is by Charlotte's Miniatures, and I have no idea how she got the fabric to look that good, that small. It is amazing. This is a slinky dog by Pequena Borikin. I hope I said that correctly. It is amazing and it's so much cuter than my slinky dog. I love it. And our final miniatures is the Vintage Sweets for a Half Scale Sweet Shop by Angela Hayworth. And I love those brass top jars. They're so cute. If you want to participate in prompt number two clock, please tag me in the picture of your mini on Instagram at Bentley House Minis, or you can send me a photo on my Facebook page at Bentley House Minis by the same name. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you will participate in prompt number two. You can see your own miniatures in my videos. I really hope you guys have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!